Well, Ian, I just want to start. Um, you're the bookies' favourite to be the new manager of Forest Green Rovers uh, after they've got a you know a, a vacancy uh, this week. Um, are, are you aware of that? Is there is there anything in it? Yeah, I'm aware of it because Steve just mentioned it as I was sitting down um, and said you might get a question about it. So um, that's why I smiled when it was the first question that you asked. Um, yeah, I've been made aware of it today, but um, yeah, it's not the first time that I've been on a on a bookies odds um, for various different jobs. And and as I said before, I guess that's just flattering that you you're doing the right things where you're at. Um, if teams in leagues above are or bookies are talking about you, then maybe somebody thinks you're doing something right. But um, other than that, for me, it's uh, the only thing that we've been talking about is Maidenhead getting promoted um, and the current games ahead. So I've got nothing else, um, <laughs> no other thoughts other than popping up on there is, is uh, yeah, sometimes flattering to see your name. Yeah, I was saying, you know, kind of a justification for the, you know, the style of football that you're playing and, you know, results on the pitch and just a, a byproduct of that. Yeah, I guess so. I guess it's no different to players to a degree that um, the, the players get linked with clubs if they're doing well and, and when the team does well, um, yeah, you, you get linked away and that's just a normal part of football, I guess. But yeah, it can be many things, style of play or, or um, yeah, whatever. But uh, yeah, just uh, I guess when you, you, your name is attached to stuff, it's because you're doing something right. And uh, hopefully, most importantly, the people in Nottingham think I'm uh, doing something right. Um, I just want to speak about Adam Chickson. I've just I've just chatted with him, um, and um, a question that I put to him was that on, on, on a Twitter poll, and lots of Knots fans have been listing him as their unsung hero. What have you made of him this season? He's been playing regularly in the team after you know struggling at other clubs. How impressed have you been with him and his development? Re- yeah, really impressed. I think most impressed last season when I came in, um, he was brilliant in the the initial training sessions. Didn't play the first couple of games, but it was hard not to notice the work he was putting in and then he got an opportunity um, and he actually got that opportunity left of a back three and he's traditionally a left back but I guess the way that we play caters for players that are, are technically capable can read the game and, and he slotted in and I thought he was brilliant last season um, and this season I just think he's been so consistent uh, game after game we know what we get but that comes with the consistency that he has every day um, mentality and attitude is just flawless um, just a brilliant lad to have about and and a real credit to uh, credit to the club credit to himself he he works so hard every day um, and that's why he has that level of consistency because he never drops off it um, and I think people like that are are priceless to the club when you've got your your flair players like your Ruben Rodriguez your Cal Roberts and Kyle Wooten up front I mean when you have players like Adam Chickson, can that sometimes help a player that they're not in that spotlight and they can just put their head down and crack on? Somebody like Chicks probably doesn't or hasn't really, as a coming back coming through as a fullback, really stolen too much limelight. Just uh, focuses on his job, and some players are are at their best when that's their role. So I think Chicks excels at being a good teammate and um, and being consistent and giving a platform for what you would say players that, that are maybe match winners at the top end of the pitch. So um, those lads that are match winners at the top end of the pitch can't function without somebody like Chicks behind. And um, yeah, th- that's why having those different characters and personalities in the team is massive. What's the mindset going in into this final regu- uh, game of the regular season? Because... You know, you're three points ahead. You're, there's, there's got to be a bit of a goal swing there. Are you, are you looking ahead at the playoffs already? Will there can we expect changes to the side? Um, no, we we don't take anything for granted. We saw some insane results in other leagues. Um, I think it was it Plymouth lost five or six nil and dropped out um, on that last day, and and um, the the Bristol Rovers score last week. I'm not suggesting anything like that's going to happen, but it could. You know. Grimsby have got the capabilities to go and score five or six goals with the quality that they've got at Eastleigh. Um, and if we don't do our job correctly, we don't end up with that home game. So we have to go for a win. We have to go with that mindset. We don't want to go thinking that we're already tied up and we need to protect people and rest. If somebody's not 100% fit or at risk, then we don't use them. That That's normal for any game. But other than that, we're going to put a team out that we think is going to win the game and play the best possible match and I think that's really important to do you know with a week then to go before a quarter final 
uh, Maidenhead proved stubborn as well. You know, they've, they've got some really good results recently. Very hard to beat. Yeah, massive credit to them because they work down there um, and, you know, it's a small club comparatively to, to where we are and some of the teams at the top. They, they acknowledge that. But at the same time, they've taken some real scalps this year. I think Wrexham, Chesterfield down there, they beat Grimsby, put three past them last week. So that they, they've done a brilliant job this year. Um, even when they came here earlier in the season, it's a tight game, 1-0. They were in it the whole way through. So I think they're, they, they, they've had some players that have performed really well. They lost some good players as well. Top scorer last year, they lost Josh Coley. Um, so that each year they lose players and they've done it again. So uh, massive credit to them. And they'll be wanting to finish on a high in front of their home fans. So um, I think it's a great test for us um, at this stage of, of where we're at. Some real intriguing fixtures, aren't there, on, on the last day? Stockport play Halifax, Wrexham, go to, to Dagenham, of course, who are desperate to get into those playoff positions. I mean, looking at the National League as a whole this season, it, it's been really entertaining, hasn't it? I mean, goals going in every week all over the place. So, I mean, a testament to what is, you know, still considered a, a non-league uh, situation. Yeah, I mean, when you look, and I think even when you look at the quality of some of the games, I think right back to, like, our I think our first televised game was Wrexham away, 1-1. And I just thought it was a great advert for the quality of the league um, straight away. And I think there's been a lot of those games that I've seen this season where I think you've just got to look at the kind of top seven or eight teams and the size of the clubs and the, the quality of football that they've played this year means it's been so competitive. And um, and even as you go further down the, the league, many of the teams, and I think, are being well coached. I, I think to like Wealdstone when we've played them and um, teams like that, that I really feel like the, the coaching staff are working really hard. So the bar's been raised a little bit, I think, and, um, and that's made it a tough, tough league. So, yeah, some intriguing fixtures at the end, a lot of things to play for, a lot of entertainment to be had on the last day. Um, hopefully ours is not one of the headlines and it's nice and calm and we, we do our job and, and nobody pays us too much attention and we, we let the others take the limelight for now. It's been your first full season in charge of Notts County, first of all regular season, hopefully it's going to carry on for a few more weeks at least. Uh, how much have you enjoyed it? There's been some strange times, there's been some fantastic times, some highs and lows. What have you made of it as the head coach? I've enjoyed it. It's it, like every season. You have challenging moments. You have moments where the team doesn't quite perform, and you have to to pick them up and go again. And I think each time that's happened, we've um, we've picked ourselves up really, really well. I think we've certainly at home. I think we can be proud of some of the performances that we've put in. Um, I think that some of the young players that we've got have developed enormously. So I think we, you know, we so far. We can say we did a lot of good things, um, but we're not there yet. There's still, you know, we've given ourselves, uh, it's going to be a tough task in the, the playoffs like it is for every year in the playoffs, but we'll, we'll certainly give it a best shot. And I think we've we've got a great chance if we can find that top level. Um, when we found it during the season, the moments where we've really hit our top form, I think we've been very, very hard to play against. And um, hopefully we can, we can do that now in the, the closing games. Uh, finally, just a word on the fans because uh, I don't know the the maths about mileage, but you know, Notts County fans have probably been up there with with most fans in the league for for distance covered for games, away games, and great atmospheres at Meadow Lane as well. Coming off the back of the pandemic, just how important has that support been this season? Oh, it's been incredible. It's been incredible when we when we go out, and I don't come out for the warm up, and um, I stay in, and so, you know, Doyler and the lads will come in, and I'll say, "How's it looking out there?" Is the How's the crowd looking? And he'll always say, you know, five, six hundred. I'll be like, wow, like it's incredible how many have travelled. And um, and when we get there, it means a lot to everybody. So um, the support home and away has been magnificent. Um, we know how much everybody wants to to get promoted, and and we mirror that. We we we're exactly the same. We want to be out of this league, um, and we're doing everything that we can. So I think. The crowd can really give us a push now. I know they're going to be down in Maidenhead in the numbers and they'll give us a push there. And if they do that and we can get the right result, um, Meadow Lane's going to be rocking a week on Monday. Uh, just finally, just a bit of uh, housekeeping with team news and, uh, and injuries. Has there been anything throughout the week or is everything in a similar position to last week? No, keep those fingers crossed. Everybody's OK. Uh, everybody's <laughs> fit, uh, healthy. And that's a great situation to be in going into this. So... Um, keep everything crossed and, and we come through this maiden Ed and we've got a full complement to choose from them.